Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 7th of November. It's been another volatile week with the cat put amongst the pigeons once again by the Federal Reserve. There were some optimistic investors hoping that uh, some slight weakening of US economic data might represent something of a pivot, so that when the Fed announced a 0.75% interest rate hike in the week, that wasn't a surprise. The surprise was the accompanying comments where the Fed said that it was too premature to be easing uh, on interest rate hiking, and also um, that uh, rates were the terminal rate is likely to be higher than expected. Markets had been expected uh, 4.5%, 4.75% for the terminal interest rate. They're now factoring in a level of 5%. Equally, of course, in the UK, the Bank of England also continued its aggressive hiking policy with a similar 0.75% rise, but also accompanying comments suggesting that if the UK wasn't already in recession, it was likely that one would be coming and potentially prolonged. That was all enough to upset markets. Uh, so any progress that had been made over recent weeks, fairly much undone. So that in the year to date, Dow Jones is now down by 12%, S&P 500, 22%. The Nasdaq down by 34%, and the FTSE 100 still one of the global outperformers in relative terms, down just 1.6%. Few numbers to look out for in terms of next week and companies reporting. First one, full year numbers from Associated British Foods. Obviously, best known in terms of the release uh, for its Primark unit, where Third quarter sales were up by 81% against the previous year, admittedly against some fairly soft comparisons. The other thing to bear in mind uh, in terms of Primark is how its foray into the US is progressing. Underpinned, of course, by um, a fairly diversified business model, for example, its grocery division uh, accounts for 23% of sales. There are always other units within the company to pick up some of the slack. That being said, the shares have been under pressure uh, and are down by 25% over the last year. Marks & Spencer also has half-year numbers. Shares, again, down by 42% over the last year. Big question marks remain over whether it's been able to fully revitalise its clothing and home unit uh, and also whether the online growth that it had been experiencing has been um, continued. At the same time, of course, the food part of the business has long since been the jewel in the crown, particularly now in terms of its joint venture with Ocado, and so updates there will also be welcome. And finally, WH Smiths have some full-year numbers. Shares down just 18% over the last year in comparison to the previous two. Uh, at the trading update in August, the company announced that travel revenues had risen by 129% versus pre-pandemic levels uh, and high street revenues up 80%. In terms of the high street, obviously there are still question mark in what is, what is seen as a reasonably expensive uh, shopping experience. The cost of living crisis obviously working against it there. But more positively, as we saw in the travel, which is basically represented by airports and railway stations, a return to international travel in particular should provide some solace for investors. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.